Today we are going to talk about measurement. So we are going to discuss SI base quantities and units, SI derived quantities and units. So before we start advanced level physics measurement, I would like to introduce the brief history of measurement. In the beginning of the human civilization, the names of many units of measurement were borrowed from human morphology. For example, the foot, the hand, the base, the cubit, etc., were being used by the people for the measurement. So here's a cubit, here's a hand, foot, base, arrangement for the time to measure and for the weight and mass. So that is how this started from the beginning. In past, the idea of modern universal measuring system did not exist. The measurement of time started with the invention of sundials by the ancient Egyptian, Egyptians in somewhere around 1500 BC. Sundials was an instrument used to measure the time by the shadow of the pointer caused by the sun. So it was working with the movement of the sun and the shadow was caused by the stick used over here. After that, the measurement of weight and length was started by ancient Egyptian and by the people of Indus Valley civilization. They're also known as Harappan civilization around 2500 BC till 1700 BC. So if you see the history of the measurement, in 1795, the number of measurement in France alone numbered around in hundreds. Nearly every single field of everyday life were using the tools of measurement. That was until 18th century, where measurement became a standard and complete system. Before starting SI units, some countries such as France had measuring system of nearly every profession in the country. As industry and trade expanded and grew across the world, the, the need became extremely serious and urgent for a single and easy standardized system of measurement. To make the trade easy in the world, an international system was necessary to create balance across the various industries and the trade in the world. So before 1960, Italy, Germany, England, America, etc., they were entirely using different system of measurement. So If you see this table, in Italy they were using MKS system. So we can see, we can make a difference between MKS. What does this mean? MKS. M stands for meter, K for kilogram, and S for seconds. In Germany, they were using CGS system. C stands for centimeters. G for grams and S for seconds here. And in England, they were using FPS system. So F stand for foot, P for pound, and S for seconds again. So here are symbol, different symbols for each unit. For example, meter is M, CM for centimeter, FT for foot, kilogram, has the symbol kg, gm is for grams, for pound we have lb, and for second s, you know. So the one thing was common in these three system, the time. Now, after that we need to, more. we need more clarification in the physical quantities. As we know that in physics we have many physical quantities, we have a scalar quantities, we have a vector quantities. So in this lesson, we are going to talk about only 
base quantities and derived quantities. So those quantities which can be measured are known as physical quantities, as I said, you know, scalar and vectors and many others. So we are going to see now what are the base quantities. So in 1960, there was a meeting in France and they decided to decide about a single system in the world. So that is called SI system. SI is abbreviation for the French system international units. So they started with system international units. So that's the reason we say it are SI units. This system is a modern form of the metric system. It is the only system of measurement with an official status, which is used in almost every single country in the world now. So we are going to see what have they decided in that meeting that held in 1960, what are the basic physical quantities? So here's the definition for the base quantities. Those quantities which are based on seven fundamental quantities are known as base quantities. SI units are commonly used by everyone, you know, like in trade, every single country for business, for packing. So that is being used everywhere in the world and that's the common system right now. In the following table here, we have the seven base quantities. So for mass, the symbol of the mass is M. That's the base quantity. Kilogram is a base unit that has a single gauge. Okay, for the length, for distance, for depth, for height, we have, we can like here, we can add displacement over here. So D is for distance, L is for length, and we write small s for displacement, okay, uh, for a straight line distance, for one directional distance. So the unit of the length is meters, and the unit is m. Okay, we have to make a difference. This m is a symbol for the mass, and that m is a symbol for the meters. That is for units, okay, here. So uh, we have to make a difference, which one is for the quantity and the other one is for the unit. Time t, small t, seconds, symbol is s. Electric current, I, ampere, shortly we can say amps, and symbol is A. Amount of substance, N, mole, and the symbol is MOL. Temperature, capital T, and Kelvin, capital K. Light intensity, the symbol is IV, so V is, okay, here, um, as a lowercase i, lowercase b, and the unit is candela, the symbol is cd. So look here, some units we are writing, okay, like a lowercase, small, like kg, lowercase, m is a lowercase here. But if you see for ampere and for Kelvin, we are writing capital K, because these units are after the name of the scientist, that is the reason, so we are writing with the capital letter. So wherever you are going to use the name of the scientist, then the unit is going to be written as a capital letter, okay? So we have to keep in mind. The other, all units, we can write them small. So after that, what are the derived quantities? Those quantities which are made from the base quantities are called are known as derived quantities. So basically, what is the meaning of derived? Derived is made, extract. We can extract units from the base one. So that's why we say derived units. They are made units from the base quantities. So all derived quantities in physics are made from the base quantities. So now we can see what are the derived units then after derived quantities. Those units which are made from base units are called derived quantities. We can see some example of the derived quantities and derived units. Velocity is a derived quantity. Why? Velocity is V. Sometimes we write arrow on it because it's a vector quantity. So velocity V 
equals s over t. Why are we writing s? Because displacement, okay? We need to know the displacement basically here. So acceleration a is a change in velocity over t. Work can be denoted by w or by energy e that has a unit joules. Now, we are going to see their units, okay? So displacement over time, meters per second. So we can write as meters per second, or we can write meters per second in this way. Meters s to the power minus one. So that's also a way to write the unit, okay? Now, what is a unit for velocity? As we can see that velocity is a meters per second over second. So that's going to be a meters per second squared here. Joules, J, kilogram, meter square, S to the power minus two. Okay, similarly, power is a derived quantity. Watts is a derived unit. And W is a symbol for the derived unit of watts. But kilogram, meter square, S to the power minus three, they are the base units of W, base units of W. So look, these are the base units of joules. Similarly, pressure, the SI unit is Pascal. So Pascal is denoted by P lowercase a, P sub a. Why? Because why we are going to write P a? Because pressure already we have the symbol P. So here we have to make a difference. So that's why we have to write a P sub a. Now, this is, these are the derived base units of Pascal. Now, frequency, the SI unit for the frequency is Hertz, but the SI unit is per second. Why it is that, okay, per second? Because the, the, the relationship between frequency and time period is that relationship actually, F equals to one over T. So it's one over S. So when we bring that S up, it's going to be per second s to the power minus one. So the hertz, the hertz is symbol for the frequency and that is derived unit, but per second is a base unit. Similarly charge. We know the formula for the charge, maybe you will take it later. The formula for the charge Q equals I T. So the SI unit for the I is ampere and for the time is second, so that's why it's AS. So one column, one column equals AS from that formula. So column is a derived unit and AS, they are base units of column. So we can see further um, some more derived quantities and units, but we can practice how to convert Okay, so how do we get all these results? We can practice from some examples. I'm going to start from Newton's here. Okay, example, convert the following derived units to SI base units. So I'm going to convert into SI base units. Now, to convert that, I'm going to give it to you a very easy rule. Always start, whenever you want to convert into base units, start from the word equation. For example, Newton. Newton is a unit of force. I'll start from the force, the simplest formula that I know for the force. Force equals mass times acceleration. Mass times acceleration. So now I got mass as a derived quantity, uh, sorry, as a base quantity, but my acceleration is the derived quantity. So I have to split more to, to get as simple as possible. I can get the base quantity. So acceleration is a change in velocity
change in velocity over time taken. So in that case, now I can write the base units of these quantities because I know easily what mass is what. So I can start from Newton now. Newton equals kilogram. And now I know that delta V is a change in velocity that is meters per second. So here I can write, okay. One thing that I have to, to know here, delta T, delta V is meters per second over second. So when I'm going to simplify, I'm going to get kilogram meters s to the power minus two. If you see here, look, s to the power minus two. Why? I can tell you here, look, mass is kilogram and velocity over here is meters per second and over second, collectively, it's going to be meters per second square for the acceleration and when we multiply kg with it so we are going to get this unit kilogram meters per second square now we want to see so it's very very important to write the word equation why because if you're not if you're going to write ma maybe you will think m is a unit of length as a meter so to make a difference you have to write the word equation then you're not going to do mistakes here why m stand for mass that's a symbol of mass and m is also a symbol of meter okay similarly s stand for second and s stand for displacement similarly pressure power and momentum we denote by p so that's why if you're going to write the word equation you're not going to mix up then you will put the exact unit of that quantity. I'm sure you will keep in mind, uh, always you are going to write the word equation to convert the derived units into the base units. Okay, now we are going to see what's a unit for weight. So again, I'll start by this way. I'll start word equation for the weight. So weight equals mass times acceleration due to gravity. So mass is kilogram. Acceleration due to gravity, we know that already here, meters per second square. So meters per second square. So here, look, it's the weight has unit newtons and we can write in terms of base kilogram meters per second square in terms of the base units. So this is how we do conversion. So let's see some more conversion. Those, they look a bit complicated. Now, another example, convert the following Sorry, convert following into base units. And here, my unit is joules. To convert into joules, I have many options to go. For example, I'm going to start with kinetic energy. Why? Joule is a unit of energy and joule is a unit of work. So I'm going to start with kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is half mass time speed square so you know when we are going to write in terms of base unit we ignore the constant over here so i'm not going to write the constant so i'll say mass and further i'm going to change into base quantities so speed is a distance over over time so now I have all base quantities. It's easy for me to write the unit joules into base unit. So joules equal kilogram meters per second. I can write it kilo. Oh, that's uh, you know, oops, the square. I forgot to do the square. So 
that has the squared over here. So it's a meter squared, S squared. That's going to be kilogram meter squared. Okay, S to the power of minus two. So these are the base units of joule. Now I have another option to see from potential energy, for example. Potential energy has a formula mass times acceleration due to gravity times the height. So I'm going to write the unit of those quantities. Okay, here, look, kilogram meters per second squared and height is a meters, okay? So that's going to be kilogram meter squared s to the power minus two. So same, if you see that, okay, that's the joules and it has the same unit. Now, the unit of the work is also joules and I'm going to try with this equation now, work. Work, e work equals force multiplied by displacement. So displacement is a base quantity, but force is not a base quantity. So I have to split force again into base quantities. So mass times acceleration times displacement. Now I can write the unit, the base unit, because almost I have got the base quantities. Kilogram acceleration is a meters per second square and a displacement is meters. So again, that's going to be kilogram meter square as to the power minus two. So if you see all units of the joules, they have a same base units here. So uh, you can use any technique. If you forget one, you can try the other one. Um, okay, let me do a practice with you with another unit that's called Pascal. Again, to convert it, go back to remember the formula for the Pascal. So Pascal is a unit for pressure. So I will write the formula, word equation, pressure equals force over area. And I'm going to convert into base quantities. So um, force is a mass times acceleration. So it's a mass time acceleration over area is a length time width. Okay, side time side, you can say, you know, like it's a, uh, so it's a length time width could be any two dimension. So I'm going to write the unit now, okay. For mass kilogram, for acceleration, meters per second square. and side inside is a meters times meters. So I can cancel one meter with the, with the denominator. So I got only one kilogram m to the power minus one, s to the power minus two. So these are, okay, here is a P lowercase a, Pascal, one Pascal equals two kilogram, m to the power minus one, s to the power minus two. So these are, the base unit of the Pascal, the pressure. Okay, one more. Convert the following derived unit into base units. So watts is a unit of power. So I'll start with word equation. So word equation is a power. Power is work done over time taken. So we can divide further, you know, time is a base quantity, but work done is not a base quantity. So work done is what? Work is a force times displacement over time. But force is not the base quantity. We can split further into mass times acceleration times displacement over time. Now almost we have got the base quantities, so we can start writing the unit now. Okay, for mass is kilogram, for acceleration is meters per second square, 
for distance is meters and for time is seconds. So we can simplify kilogram meter square s to the power minus three. So the base unit for watt could be kilogram meter square s to the power minus three. So that's easy to go to from the word equation, we can go back to the base quantities and then we can put the base unit of any derived quantity. So for me, this SI system is so wonderful because the greatest advantage of SI system is that it has only one unit for each quantity. Uh, they are not like, um, like to, to convert from yard to meters or from miles to kilometers, you need a scale for it. Or for, from ounce to grams, uh, from inches to centimeters. Uh, no, they are not like that. They are not built from the other units. So they have seven quantities as a base. They are not built from other units. So they do not need the reference of other units then to convert. This means that is never necessary to convert from one unit to another within the system, within the SI system. There are no conversion factors for the student to memorize. Look, some students, those they convert from, from foot to yard or inches uh, to centimeters, they memorize factors, but here you don't need to, okay? So that's almost end of the lesson. I wrote the conclusion. And 